So let's go on admin.google.com and then let's move to security area. First thing to look is the overview. In the overview window, you will find the main information about managing security in Google Workspace. First one is the Alert Center. The Alert Center keeps track of alerts happening throughout the time. On the first part of each alert, we found a graphic symbol. The first one is an apps outage graphic symbol. For example, the last updated at May 2nd, 2024 at 1.46 a.m. tells that there was an apps outage with Gmail that has been resolved. If we want to see details, we can click on it and we will find detailed information, including the tracking ID, the status, the details, the affected services, and the intended resolution by. Apart from that, there are some more information in the bottom part of the page, and we can leave a comment below the alert history title. The second one is reporting rule that has been matched. For example, this one is Jess Stratton login success report rule. Probably Jess Stratton successfully logged in on October the 16th, 2023. The person who created the rule also set a severity level of medium. The third one is a Google mandatory service announcement legal. Let's click on this for details, for example. Here we can see that there is a legal notice updates to cloud data processing addendum, Google Workspace service specific terms, and adoption of alternative transfer solution. And there is another one that informs us when an APNS certificate is expired. As you can see, both mandatory service announcement legal and APNS certificate expired have a severity level of I. Let's go back to the overview, and now let's move to the rules. We've seen rules already when we talked about reporting. So we can create a new rule, click on Create Rule Reporting. We will not go through this as we've been already. Let's go back on Security Overview. And now let's have a look at Data Protection. Data Protection, first of all, informs us about insights for Google Drive. So there has been one global email address shared externally, number of files with data type and percentage of shared externally, global gender identity, two files shared with that data type externally, and global phone number, six number of files shared with that specific data type. We can protect our organization's sensitive data in two ways, depending on the level of licensing that we are using. The first one, we can manually set external sharing settings for Drive, organized by organizational unit or group. The second one needs an enterprise edition of Google Workspace. In that case, we can scan for Drive file with content detectors, and we can set rules accordingly. On the bottom part, we can set data protection settings. Specifically, there are data inside scanning and report options. For Google Drive only, we can perform scans of Drive files and generate data protection inside reports on how many files with sensitive content were shared externally. For Google Chrome, there is a new option that lets us perform scans and generate Chrome data protection insights for content downloaded, uploaded, or printed in Chrome. We can change this option clicking on the pencil. Let's move on and let's have a look at some more advanced security settings. Let's move to data classification. Data classification uses the power of artificial intelligence to create classifier and label sensitive data. This is a very new feature that uses the power of modern artificial intelligence to help us in automatically classifying and labeling data so we can set up training and move on. After that, we can manage the default classification for Google Drive and Google Doc, clicking on Manage. Here, we can manually create labels and apply them to the files. Let's revert to Security Overview. Here, we can set up 
passwordless authentication. Enabling this option, we can allow our users to skip passwords at signing using the pass keys. Passwordless authentication, also known with the name of frictionless authentication, enhances the level of general security, avoiding the users to type in password that can be easily recognized afterwards. Let's move back to the overview. Moving on, and remembering that passwordless authentication is actually in the beta testing phase, let's have a look at the password management. First thing, we can enforce strong password. If we want to exactly know what a strong password is, we can click on the Learn More, where we have information about the requirements for a strong password. Generally speaking, strong password does not contain any personal information that can be easily recognizable. A strong password is easy to remember, but hard to guess. Then we can set up the length of the password, minimum and maximum. We can enforce the password policy at the next sign-in, this meaning that if the user's password does not meet the password requirements, the user will be prompted and forced to change his or her password. We can allow password reuse, meaning that when the user changes the password, can reuse the old one. The best option would be to clear this checkbox. And we can also set an expiration time for the password from never to 365 days. Password options can be set up on a domain level or organizational unit level. Let's move back to the overview center. And let's have a look at less secure app security settings. Within this area, we can allow users to manage their access to less secure apps or recommended, we can force users to disable access to less secure apps. In any case, this option will be deprecated very soon in summer of 2024, and Google Workspace accounts will no longer support less secure apps as they pose a significant security problem in the account. Less secure apps ask us to sign in to our Google account just with username and password. If we still want to use external applications and third-party applications, we must use the OAuth option. If you want to prepare for this change, you can click on the transition from less secure apps to OAuth article. Let's move back to the overview. And let's have a look at this two-step verification. First thing, we can allow users to turn on two-step verification, also known as MFA or multi-factor authentication. The best option would be to enable multi-factor authentication, as this increases the level of security of our personal account of 99% on account forgery. Furthermore, we can enforce the use of two-step verification, this meaning that the user will not be able to log on on their account if they do not use two-step verification. We can choose to enforce this immediately or from a specific moment in time. We can allow new users some time to enroll before enforcement is applied. That can be from known to six months. We can also choose that users can avoid repeated two-step verification at login on their trusted device, allowing users to trust their device. We can also choose which methods will be allowed for two steps verification. Any method, any method except verification codes using text and phone call, or only security keys. We can let users temporarily sign in with the verification codes in addition to the security keys, and the user exceptions period starts when we generate the verification code. And finally, there are security codes. Security codes are single-use codes that can be used when the security keys are not supported. Users can generate these codes from the URL that is shown here. We can choose not to allow users to generate security codes. We can choose to allow security codes without remote access, and we can also choose to allow security codes with remote access.